Welcome to the latest Water Colors Aquarium Gallery video brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Today we're going to try and demystify one of those big questions, high-tech versus low-tech mm. aquarium. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. The uh, classic, I want to start a planted tank or I have a tank and I want plants but it's just so hard and you need so much stuff. Right. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to start off by saying no, you don't. No. <laughs> this is a low-tech planet aquarium. Mm -hmm. There's right. no CO2. We dose it semi-regularly. <laughs> when do we get around to it? Yeah. And aside from that, it's just, you know, normal fish tank, like water changes and mm -hmm. et cetera. And it does great. So basic, so to me, when somebody says, I want to do a high-tech tank versus I want to do a low-tech tank, Really what they, I think they're saying is, I want to do an aquarium that has CO2 mm -hmm. versus I don't want to mess with CO2. Yeah. I think that's kind of the big, the leap right there. Yeah, I think so. I think that's where people get nervous. Yeah. And uh, this is just a, like a perspective of like how different I think about this sort of thing. So like, I don't think of it as like CO2 versus not CO2. I think of it as in terms of fast plant growth versus slow plant growth. Yeah. I think that's going to be the result, yeah. yeah. but we're talking about the technology here. Yeah, well, and then CO2 does have the advantages of, like, it makes faster growing plants like Colosso sustainable in your system. Right. Like, that would never work in here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's a good distinction as well, just because I think, like, just adding CO2 on a tank doesn't necessarily make it high tech. If you're still growing all low light plants, if you're still growing, you know, it will just make them grow faster. So, yeah, yeah. I, the, the terms high tech and low tech don't often, I don't think that they're very descriptive for what they mean. It's a little too simplistic, yeah. high tech versus low tech. But on the lower tech side, it's going to be substrate made for plants. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little bit better light, although not necessarily and live plants. Yeah. That's a low-tech tank. Now that you can in increase or improve your light a little bit, you can dose with some fertilizers here and there, Yeah. and still I would say fall into that low-tech category. Mm -hmm. I think as soon as you add the CO2, yeah. you're kind of moving on to that next level. You're cooking with gas, or in this case, growing with gas. Yeah. yeah. And the case being that if you just upgraded the light, well, you would just have an algae tank, not a high-tech aqu planted right. aquarium. So, yeah, the CO2 is really the distinction. I like the tripod analogy. If you think of the sustainability of a planted aquarium as a tripod, with each leg of that tripod being light, CO2, and nutrients. Mm -hmm. On a regular tripod, if you would raise or lower run of one of those without raising or lowering the others, the tripod would fall over. Yeah. If you raise or lower all three of those together, the tripod stays the same. Mm -hmm. I think you've got a little bit more flexibility with CO2. I think you can take a low-tech tank that's growing just fine and is yeah. well-balanced, put in a little bit of CO2 carefully, yeah. not wipe your fish out, and get some better growth out of your plants. Definitely. It would be nice if more people appreciated that subtlety because yeah. a low level of CO2 and a tw the five-pound CO2 tank at a low level for a the low growth aquarium, replace that once a year or so, get it tuned, and don't mess with it. For a long time. For a long time. Cruise control. Yeah. The other side of that coin is, let's talk about exactly what, this is high tech all in. Yeah. Right? We want a super high and powerful light mm -hmm. that's going to just drive those plants. We're going to want to measure and pay attention to the amount of CO2 that goes into the system. So we know the light and the CO2 are balanced correctly. Mm -hmm. And we're going to need to, as a result, dose a, a regimented amount of fertilizers so that the nutrient level can keep up with the plant growth. Yeah. And I think those are things that are not as complicated as a lot of people initially think they are. Right. Like, and maybe as a person who spent a lot of time in chemistry labs, maybe I'm biased, <laughs> but like, 
testing for that Glosso tank over there, that's not hard. Just it's see just, where your nitrates are at. You just gotta test it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Uh, and there's so much that you can do without even testing, uh, just by getting really familiar with your system, knowing your plants really well. If you've been working in a tank for a while, it's pretty easy to tell, okay, that Anubius is starting to yellow again. Did I dose potassium this month? Whoops. <laughs> Listen to your tank, yeah. it can tell you. And most plants die slowly, so they'll tell you a long time ahead of time. I do the same thing with CO2, yeah. right? If my fish aren't at the top, it's not too much CO2. Right. If the next morning I wake up and the fish are all that stuff gasping for air, I yeah. probably ought to turn the CO2 down a little bit. If you take those baby steps, you're not gonna wipe your tank out. Mm -hmm. If you turn, crank that CO2, you can gas your fish, yeah. and they can suffocate if they can't get enough oxygen from the water. The plants will convert that CO2 to oxygen very, very quickly if the balance is there. Yeah. And it's easy to get scared when you are trying to make that jump, where you've got, you've got your low-tech tank, it's working really well, and you, you feel like, I'm ready to take that next step, and you buy the coolest light that you've seen. Yes. And, oh no, all of a sudden, all the plants I've been working to grow are covered in <laughs> algae. What do I do? I screwed everything up. Just take a deep breath, think about your tripod, get everything else in place, and then if starts to become easy again, just like when you set up your first tank and it was terrifying and then all of a sudden it worked. You find that balance. Yeah. Yep. I like it. What do you guys think? Did we explain it? Low tech versus high tech? What do you guys think? Did we confuse you more? Did we go, <laughs> what, what, what about? Give us a comment. Let us know what you think. Let us know what your idea of that absolute, I'm doing a high tech tank and this is the piece of equipment that I don't think I can live without. Or show us some pictures of your low tech tank. In fact, I'm going to post some pictures of my low tech tank at home here pretty soon. Look for that video coming up. Yeah, it is a sounds... very low tech tank. <laughs> but fully planted and gorgeous. Because you like can do it. like 12 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Check out our podcasts. Look for us on all of those things, social media <laughs> things y'all kids are looking for these We're days. We're pretty much everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> Keep those hands wet and have lots of fun.